<laughs> oh god, what have I done? Put on further, further inspection. What is, what is that? Today's video is sponsored by OBD11. More on that later in the video. Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. As you can probably hear, I am looking at auctions. I'm potentially about to make a risky move. I've spotted. Let me go back to the beginning. We've, I've been looking for a Range Rover, as you know, for my dad recently. We happened to buy in a very nice black car through cars bought for more. Um, so if you are looking to sell your car, please do feel free to head over there. And we bought one in, nice low mileage. We only had it for a few days and sold it. Absolutely brilliant margin in it. It's just the best news we've ever had, really. So um, my dad's still in the market for one, but he didn't want a black one like that one, although he would have had that one if I hadn't sold it. But anyway, here's a, a nice grey one that I've seen. Got that bad boy. I think it's a year newer than the one we just had. Obviously, we'd need to get the wheels refurbished. I think there is a little bit of paint that it needs doing. Um, it's the next one going through, so I'll show you as much as I can. But basically, what is it on? 54,000 miles-ish. It's got a full clean assured report. I think it needs a little bit of paint on one of the pillars and crack little seat thing, not the end of the world. Potentially the margin in this could be huge because it's retail of about 27,000 pounds. Cap clean of 18,700. I don't know where it's going to start or where it's going to go. Is it going to go over? Is it going to go under? See, that's, I think that's bloody cheap. Yeah, Madri now, bit of, bit of Madri, old Perone, 78, at 78, 78, 79, 9, 78, 18, 18, 18, 1, 15, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, you can't buy them at auction, I think. We need to be buying them privately or something. I don't know. It's risky, isn't it? So that was 19.7, so it's going to say it's going to be 20, I reckon 20,200 out the door. Now, Water Trader gives us a retail rating. It tells us how popular it is within our area. Ours is six out of 100%. So that's like 6% in demand, which doesn't sound very good, does it? So the retail price is 27,705 pounds. Most people have got theirs up at around about 100% of that. A few of them had them for a long time though. 218 days, 290 days, 173 days. So I think realistically, what would you want to price that? 27,495, let's say. That tells us that it should sell in about 76 days. I don't know about that. 20,200 pounds. You still have a margin of 7,295 pounds. So I definitely could have bid more, but I'm just not ballsy enough yet we're getting there but you know not just yet that was a couple of thousand over what we paid for our other one it would have sold for a couple of thousand over so it's probably still around at the same sort of market but we got to check ours out and test it and whatever not just buy it from auction and as i say this one had a cracked little seat Let's see if we can find that damage i'm sure there was like you know, a little buff on the roof somewhere and then the bloody pictures are work now i thought like up here or something it had, had a little buff but maybe not we were umming and ahhing with what my dad would actually, and that's suspect, that back thing isn't back. So that would be a twin sort of pan roof with a structural bar across the middle. Having just bought a Ford Edge at BCA and there was a big crack, to be fair they did photograph it and I didn't really spot it, I thought it was a watermark. Why isn't that back screen over, does that mean it's got, because there's the pan roof for that Ford Edge. 3,000 pounds we were getting quoted. 4,000, 3,000, 4,000 was two different quotes. I mean, if you know Range Rovers and you've got a big set of shiny brass balls, then there's good money to be made in selling them, I imagine, until they break and go wrong. Uh, we do have another one going through later. This one's a bit cheaper because it's slightly more mild. 77,000, it's black again. It's not really what the old man wanted, but I think he would go for it. Look, just, out of, just for your reference, look. So that's the, a pan roof that's fully opened, and I'm curious as to why the other one isn't fully open. Are they hiding a cracked pan roof? Because that would be very, very costly. This one has just got plain black interior other than the armrest and the dashboard, which is, I think, a bit boring, really. I think if you spend that sort of money, you want something a bit nicer. But it has got side steps, which is a necessity for my dad. 
you've seen him hobbling around. I, mean, I don't mean to be mean to him. He, he's had two replacement knees and one replacement hip. He needs the other hip done, really. And his back fused. We'll have to keep an eye out. Do you know what's funny about that as well? There's my dad hobbling around, right? And I had someone in the comments of a video the other day saying, I went to school with this lad, meaning me, apparently. Fair play to him, to anyone starting a business, but helps when mummy and daddy are millionaires. I'm like, fucking hell. My dad would love to have known that before he worked to like 60 with no cartilage in his knees as a plumber. We know what the comment section's like, don't we? Idiots. Yes, and obviously he's a millionaire, that's why he's trying to get me to buy him a second hand end of life Range Rover as his like ultimate treat to himself in retirement because of the millions, mate. Yeah, anyway, I don't know if that even constitutes a video. Maybe if we try and have a bit on another one later, we'll roll that in. Um, if not, we'll catch up later and I'll, I'll do an outro then. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll try and remember to do it, but I do miss them quite often. That does happen. Anyway, phone's ringing, so we'll catch up with you later. Good afternoon, Barry Motors. Okay, right then, auction fans, we're back. I said I'd try and get this other one going through. It's going through in 10 lots. So let's have a look at our other contender. It's another Range Rover Sport. This one is black though, but it has got the side steps. Lovely wheels. I think it does look nice. I wonder if they're 22s. They don't look as big as the ones we just had on that other one, do they? But maybe that's because they're silver rather than black. Oh, there I see it. They've got Devante tyres on, so that's not a, usually a great sign because it's not a premium brand. Yeah, did we look at this previously? We did pretty quickly, didn't we? So it's all black interior, which isn't as exciting. It's nice that it's got a different kind of armrest and dashboard, at least. 77,000 miles. Now, it might not necessarily be from a dad, but could it potentially be good stock all the same? It would cost me less to have it in stock. It has got a cap clean of 15,750. It's a three litre, so it's not a you know, worry, engine you want to worry about. Four services, uh, MOT till February next year. It says retail is 18,450. Now, AutoTrader's gonna disagree with that. It says it's 21,611, without even taking into consideration any specification. Uh, the part X value's 13,410. Now, I reckon if it went for, say, 15 and a half grand, and you sold it for, let's just change that slightly to 21,495. Gotta make it slightly more. And what should I say? 15 and a half grand. You could have basically a £6,000 margin, which you would need to have in this thing. It's the next one coming up, actually. So we'll see. If I can get it for 15 and a half, which I think is going to be 15 one plus fees, that might even take it over slightly, then maybe I'll go for it. We've got to pick it up from Blackbush, which is about two hours away. If I'm no, no, he hasn't got a trailer on. Typically, Macaulay is probably around Blackbush currently. Should we see where he is? He's at BCA Blackbush right now. Look, in the parking lot. So he'll be, he's picking up a mini paceman as we speak. My new Range Rover is right there. Do you know what I've always liked the look of next to BCA? Hey, there's a, I'd love to be, get to a point where I'm so rich that I can fly in to BCA Blackbush in this, there's an airport. Just land there and you'd be like, go and buy some cars and just to top it off, you just go to this little racetrack that's around the back, look. A little karting track. Look at that. Cool, isn't it? Just tell you what, there's some serious amounts of cars there. Anyway, right, here we go. Fiesta money. Got a clear report on it as well. Mm. I'm going to let them let them settle in first, and I'll come in as a. Four services with a pan roof. Yes, it's still going, see. I want to hold off and come in as a. 44. 45. Six, seven. Clear report. Oh. Climb OT. Got the history and selling. That's half of it. About 15. There we go. So I thought about 16 grand to be fair. Yeah, Fiesta money. Keep on the bus. Sold. HSE Diamonds. Oh, God. What have I done? Oh, well, we bought it. So I did say, you know, it's good, good money in it. I'm not worried. You worried? Would you be you worried about that? No. no. No, I think that'd be all right. Um, well, there you are. Let's just double check I have bought that. Yeah, so here it is. We have won it for £15,000 plus fees. I can tell you exactly how much the fees are. 
485 plus a £49.80 assured report and zero VAT. Normally you pay VAT on the assured report. So 15,534. So we should have a six grand margin in there, which would not be, not be, which is not to be, not, that is not to be sneezed at. Um, I guess we'll just cut that here. There's no point waffling on. We'll see you when Macaulay's picking it up, probably on our trailer, bringing it back, and then we'll, I don't know, have a look at it, I guess. See you then. Here it is, the uh, Ranger we're picking up today. It's lovely. I believe it's the L494. All loaded up, ready to get back to Burrow. Let's get on the road. Right, so our Range Rover has arrived. I think we'll pull it out and we'll have a look around and see what we've got. All right then, here we are. Uh, Macaulay brought this back. We've been looking at it and thinking like, does it look unlevel? But I think actually, if you look at the car, the car looks level, but it just looks like it's got a bigger arch gap at the front. But it also does something weird on occasion, it seems. It must be something in the settings. I know it is, and I can't figure out how to do it because I'm a complete technophobe, but it kind of lowers itself. When you turn the ignition off, it lowers itself a certain amount. And then when you open the door, it lowers itself even more to like go into access mode, which worried me for a minute because I thought the suspension might have collapsed. There's another reason I might have been slightly worried, but we'll get into that in a minute. But we'll go around, have a look at it. <clears throat> On the whole, the body works actually quite good. We've got our Devantes, which probably aren't the best tires in the world. We do have some curbing. So ideally, we're going to want to get these refurbished. It's nice that they're silver, at least. They don't look that bad. I'm hoping we've got a full set of Devantes. Yeah, a bit more curbing, but another Devante. At least someone's done all four at some point. Um, but yeah, we're going to need to get all the tyres refurbished and maybe put some, some nicer... All the tyres refurbished? All the wheels refurbished and maybe put some nicer tyres on. So this one is a 3-litre TDV6. It's not an autobiography which I thought my dad might have wanted this, but now we've seen an autobiography, which is like that one over there, the black one that we had, which is very, very nice. Um, he wants all the bells and whistles, but you know, once he sees this, he might fall in love with it. One thing that concerned me when Macaulay picked this up is he's like, I don't know what this is, but I've just found it in the Range Rover. And there is a diagnostics tool stuck in there, <clears throat> which leads me to think there might be something up with this car. I'll be honest with you, I did take this home last night because I was concerned about that. And it all seems to drive fine, I unplugged that. But I am going to run our own diagnostics using my OBD11 to see if there's any faults here that we might need to know about. So we're gonna take our tiny little OBD11 tool, so tiny it comes with a key ring, how cool is that? We're gonna stick it down here into the OBD port and then we can connect fire an app on our phone. I imagine we're gonna need to turn the ignition on. Right, so it's found our car, it tells us it's a Land Rover. Our voltage is 12 volts. We're gonna tap this to scan and see if we've got any kind of orange codes in here. Red codes would probably show up with a warning on the dashboard, but this will show us other codes that are in the car, things that might have popped up in the past or things in the background that we're not aware of. Right, it tells us one fault found. Found? Found. Oh. SCR NOx, catalyst efficiency below threshold, bank one. That doesn't sound very good. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear that. I've got a screen recording of it here, so we can always look back at it. But it's good to know that we can clear that code and then we can take it out for a drive like we will in a minute, find out how it drives and see if it's come back on, telling us whether that's actually a, a current fault or not. Right, so that's cleared. We'll take it out for a spin in a minute and find out whether it comes back on again or not. But the cool thing about the OBD11 is that you can do customization on certain cars as well, especially VAG Group, BMW, even Rolls-Royce and some others. So we've got a nice little Audi A1 here we took in part exchange. Not even part exchange, I bought it yesterday. So should we plug that in and see if we can do some customization? Right, so I've got our key and when we unlock it now, there's no audible chime, there's no excitement or drama going on here. You just get a little flick of the lights. I'm pretty sure that with OBD11 we can change that. Toby likes a little beep on his car. He wants to let everyone know, look, I'm getting him a Golf. I hate it, but we're going to try and turn it on anyway. Right, so I've plugged that in. I'm going to go to my OBD11 VAG Group app, connect to our dongle, 
and then we're going to go through and see what we can customize. Right, so we're plugged in, we've found, we've gone to apps, which tells us all the different things we can change, all sorts of things. You can do naughty things, like turn on video in motion. So if you wanted to watch, you know, Netflix or something while you're driving, then you could turn that on. It'd be very naughty, but you could do it. But what we want, just to prove a point, is the lock and unlock acoustic confirmation. Currently, it says off, we're gonna change the value to, well, you can, you can choose whether you do lock, unlock, or both. We're gonna go for both. So we're gonna ask it to program that. That is done. That's how easy it was. So let's get out, lock it, and see if it's done the trick. Stand back, Toby. It's gonna blow your eardrums now. Hey, hey! Easy as that. So there we have it. If you wanna get yourselves one of these little OBD 11s, check the link in the description and you can get 10% off. Right, let's go and drive this car and see how it goes. Right, so I can't say I've actually driven a huge amount of these Range Rover Sports this generation, whatever they are. I don't even know what the model designation is, but Toby will put it at the bottom of the screen now. In fact, I think the only ones I've ever really driven any further than just around the forecourt is this one, which I drove home last night, and an SVR, which is a ridiculous vehicle. Not something I think I'd ever own myself, but incredibly how fast you can go in what is essentially a house. Anyway, we're just gonna drive this thing and see if everything seems to drive as it should. Does the suspension feel okay? It is telling us to check all of our tire pressures, which makes me think, mm, have the tire pressure monitors been damaged or something? So we might be in for a bill on those. I don't know, it is giving us a flat warning. Um, what other messages have we got? I imagine that's it. We've also got a triangle on the dashboard, but I think that's telling us about the flat tires, supposedly. We've got heated seats, but we haven't got cooled seats. We have got navigation, which looks like a very nice modern display. Nice thing about these Range Rovers is you do have really nice amounts of visibility and you're up nice and high, which I think is why a lot of people are drawn to them because you feel kind of secure and safe. and You're the biggest thing on the road. We've got a Meridian sound system in here, which I tested out last night, is very good as they usually are in these Range Rovers. We've obviously got Bluetooth, Bluetooth media, all that sort of stuff. I like that you've still got physical dials for all the heating controls. And what's nice actually is a nice kind of combination in our heating controls here. You've also got the heated seat control. So you just press that in order to control your heated seat, which is very good as well, I might add. And then switch back and you can control your climate control. That is far more simple than it is trying to go through the controls here on the screen to sort that out. Another feature on here that I really like that I think is probably essential for a lot of Range Rover drivers, if you press this little camera button, A, we've got the road ahead, that's quite cool. You can have a reversing camera as well. Could be quite handy if you were towing and you wanted to keep an eye on hooking up your tow hitch or whatever, but this one in particular, will it not allow me to do it? Well, we're going, we're going too fast. So there is a 360 bird's eye view on here somewhere that I was using before. It makes it look like we're going a hundred times faster on the TV screen than we actually are. But there's no one around. We'll come to a stop. I'm fairly certain. Oh, yeah, we get more options when we're got different corners we can look at. Plan view, there we go. So now you get an overhead view of your car, of the road around you. So if you're concerned that your car is massive, you're driving a double-decker bus where you can actually look and you can see that you could probably actually get closer to the curb and give the other road users a little bit more room than you are because you're panicked you're gonna curb your 20-inch alloy wheels because your great wanker tank is so huge, there's just not possibly any room left for other road users. Where actually you can look at your little screen here and see, oh, do you know what, actually, I have got six foot still to move over, so I probably could give an inch there. The nice thing about these is even though they're huge and turning circle isn't great, steering's light, they're remarkably, powerful. 
They're much fussier now about this latching thing on your gear stick. You should be able to just, the old Disco 4s and thing, just sling it into drive and it'll be fine, but. It's got no business being as nippy as it is, really. 240 horsepower, I think, which is more than enough in something like this. Be an incredible towing car. You can have sport mode. And not only are we absolutely flying along, it's ridiculously smooth, especially considering this road that we're on. You've probably seen me do this in hatchbacks before and I'm, you know, flopping around like a disgusting piece of jelly, but not in here. And our flappy paddles, the command shift as they call it, are very snappy. And you get a very cool little display on the screen as well, actually, that tells you which gear you're in. Probably not the sort of thing you normally buy thinking you want something fast, but they're definitely no slouch, that's for sure. So, I can't see anything mechanically wrong with this. It drives sublimely. I think we probably need to sort out the kind of auto access mode. Um, I guess it's not an issue, but I don't like it. it. Once it parks, it looks like it's kind of lost all the air in the airbags or something. Um, it obviously needs to go through the workshop for its PDI and all that sort of stuff, so I'm not going to know exactly how much it's going to need in little bits and pieces, but Join me back in the office and we'll talk about how much we paid for it and how much I'm hoping to get for it. Right, it's actually the next day. I completely forgot to come in here and talk figures with you. I got back and sort of said, there's the car, Dad. Take it and see if you want it. And unsurprisingly, he does, so uh, this may be the worst profit I've ever made out of a car in my entire life, especially one of this value. The car itself, we bid £15,000. We had to pay £485 of buyer's fees and £49.80 for the BCA Assured report, which is a total of £15,534.80. And, and of course, we had to collect it from Blackbush, which is basically London. It's the opposite side of the country for us, so we'll just say 200 quid to do that. And because I'm such a lovely son, I've said to my dad he can have this for £16,000. Well, I didn't actually say that. I just told him how much it cost me. He just sent me £16,000. So I might have asked for more, but now it's awkward. So thanks, Dad. Just kidding. It's fine. We've also got to pay £77.55 in VAT on that, which is 16.67% of the difference between £15,534 and £16,000. So my net profit, never mind you know, overheads and whatever, but we'll say we're gross profit out of this once we've taken out the other bits. £187.56. So, I mean, it will buy me a nice dinner out, won't it? A few, probably. Maybe I could take the team out for a curry or something. So, either way, my dad's got a nice car. You know what happened is, though, something will go wrong with that and he'll expect me to fix it. But he won't. He's very good. Anyway, that is the video. I think it panned out all right. The car seems to be really good. I had some concerns that the suspension was doing weird stuff. Turns out it's got its own setting for like lowering itself once you open the car, which you can change. But, you know, my dad likes it that way. It's got steps and whatever, and it can help him get in. So win-win. So that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know that it's a good video and we should do more like this in the future. Don't forget to subscribe. You'll be in with a chance of winning this watch. As soon as we hit 75,000 subscribers, I'm giving away this £2,000 Tagoya watch. I mean, who else gives you something in return for subscribing? I find it annoying when people ask me to subscribe, but I'm trying to give you something here. So jump on board. Yeah, that's it for this time. I'll see you in the comments section. See you next time.